All right, so today we're testing the RX 6600 XT versus the Intel Arc A750. Those are all the specs. You can pause right there if you want to see more. So first off, we'll start with Cyberpunk 2077. This is just the in-game benchmark and uh, it's just easier to reproduce all the results. You can see that uh, the frame rates are pretty identical. On the left, we've got the 6600 XT and on the right, we've got the A750. And the power draw on the 6600 XT is uh, quite a bit lower than on the right, but the frame rate is pretty much the same. The Intel edges are slightly ahead, but not by much. This is at 1080p on the high preset. I just manually disabled upscaling because upscaling gets enabled when you use the presets. So this is a 1080p native high preset and it, uh, they perform pretty similarly, right? The average frame rate on the Intel card is slightly higher, but then the lows are slightly higher on the MD card. All in all, the experience is identical actually, and you wouldn't notice any difference between these two cards unless you've got a frame rate counter enabled. All right, and then next up, we've got the ray tracing results. So this is at 1080p on the medium ray traced uh, preset, but once again, upscaling has been disabled. And yeah, the Intel card is significantly faster than the 6600 XT. Now, just because it is a high frame rate doesn't really mean that it's uh, playable. Sure, some people might argue 30 frames per second is playable, but uh, seeing that it's a first person shooter game, an RPG game, an action game, whatever, you play it in the first person. Uh, I don't really think that 30 frames per second is ideal for this uh, game. Now I'm only including the ray tracing performance in this video purely because a lot of people ask for it and uh, I think it's pretty good to see how far Intel has come against the competition but I don't really think that uh, ray tracing at native is usable especially on uh, more budget friendly GPUs but if you really want to use ray tracing then at least there are some upscaling options which we'll look at next. All right, so here we are at 1080p still on the medium RT preset, but this time with upscaling enabled. We've got FSR quality enabled for the Radeon GPU and uh, Intel XSS quality mode for the Intel GPU. And you can see that uh, once again, the margins are pretty much uh, the same. The Intel almost gets to 60 frames per second in this specific scene. Now gameplay performance is slightly different to benchmarking performance or in-game benchmark performance. So don't expect this frame rate throughout the game at all times. Also, like we are using different uh, upscaling technologies here. So this comparison is purely for fun. You shouldn't really take this data to heart. But I did want to show you each vendor's respective upscaling tech in a video. So once again, don't uh, think this is a one-to-one -one comparison. It definitely is not. And that goes for all the rest of the upscaling tests in this video as well. I just wanted to show you what you could expect by using each brand's upscaler. All right, so next up we've got Dying Light. This is also done at 1080p on the high preset. And you can see that uh, the Intel nudges ahead slightly here as well. The, I'm trying to actually keep the benchmark as uniform as possible. It's not always uh, possible because uh, I don't always completely remember which path I've taken, but this is in the exact same area. Just uh, know that this is uh, a very small part of the game and uh, this performance should not be expected throughout the whole game. But you can see that the averages on the Intel is 10 frames per second higher and the 0.1% lows are also quite a bit higher. All right, now we get to the ray tracing tests and this is once again at the 1080p high preset. All I've done is I've manually enabled ray tracing. I've enabled all ray tracing options that the game provides and then I've got no upscaling enabled on either. So you can see the Intel Arc GPU pulling slightly ahead once again. And we are seeing an increase of around 16 frames per second in both the averages and the lows. Now the Intel's uh, ray tracing performance actually impressed me in this one. I didn't expect it to pull ahead so much, but uh, here we are and uh, next up we'll be testing with upscaling. All right, yeah, we are still on the same settings, 1080p high preset with uh, ray tracing, all options enabled. And we've got FSR quality on the AMD side and XESS quality on the Intel side. 
and you can see that uh, the Intel GPU is actually staying above 60 frames per second at all times where the AMD GPU dips into the 50s here. Now, once again, this would not be indicative of uh, full gameplay when you get to cities, etc. The frame rate does drop on both GPUs, but the Intel has a better chance of staying close to that 60 frames per second mark. And once again, we see a significant increase in the lows. Now, next up, we've got Harry Potter or Hogwarts Legacy. This is once again on the 1080p high preset and here the AMD GPU redeems itself. The performance on the Arc GPU dips below 60 frames per second every now and again, whereas on the AMD GPU it's uh, staying above 70 most of the time. You can see that there's quite a big difference in the 1% and 0.1% lows as well. So for those of you who aren't familiar with those, those would just uh, indicate uh, stuttering. And if you look at the frame time graph, the AMD GPU definitely gives us a much a smoother experience here as well as uh, getting around 10 frames per second more when it comes to the averages all right so i just wanted to see what we would need to get a constant 60 frames per second experience on the arc gpu so i've enabled xcss on the ultra quality preset and uh, on the left we've got fsr quality now xcss ultra quality does render at a higher internal resolution than fsr quality unfortunately there's not a higher setting that we can use for fsr so once again these results are not comparable at all i just wanted to see what we could do to get 60 frames per second and at do you think that Intel does have a slight advantage there in the form of ultra quality because uh, upscaling at 1080p is definitely hit and miss especially when it comes to the image quality. All right, so here we've got the 1080p high preset once again, but now I've enabled ray tracing on medium, but uh, no upscaling is enabled. And here you can see that the Arc GPU actually pulls ahead once again. The Arc GPU was quite slower when it came to rasterization performance, but uh, now with ray tracing enabled, it actually surpassed the AMD GPU. Now, once again, I would not advocate uh, to play at these uh, settings. So this is just uh, to test the native settings with ray tracing and if you want playable experiences you actually need to enable FSR or XSS at a quite aggressive level. Speaking of which year we have upscaling enabled, we've got FSR balanced and XSS balanced. Those are the only presets that would get me 60 frames per second or above 60 frames per second when ray tracing was enabled. But now, once again, you can see that the AMD GPU has actually caught up. The performance is pretty similar when both use the exact same upscaling preset, albeit from their respective vendors. Now you can see that uh, the frame rate average on the Arc is around 66 frames per second and on the AMD it is now 62 frames per second. So a pretty good uh, catch up there by the Intel Arc GPU once we actually enable ray tracing. All right, and uh, next up, we've got the Witcher 3 Next Gen. Now, this is in DX12 mode, and here you can see that the Arc GPU is actually quite a lot faster than the AMD GPU. Now, I went back, and because I thought that my results were a little bit strange, because uh, I remember the AMD GPU faring a lot better. So I went and checked all my older footage, and uh, the Witcher actually ran at 100 frames per second with these exact same settings. Uh, in a previous build. So I'm not sure if it's driver related or game build related or even Windows update related, but uh, the Intel Arc GPU is now quite a bit faster than the AMD GPU using these settings. I even installed the AMD GPU in another system just to make sure that it's not system related, but uh, Tres Bob, it performed exactly the same. All right, so here we've got the ray tracing results once again, and as per usual, we've got uh, ray tracing at native, no upscaling, 1080p on the high preset, and now the Intel GPU is around uh, almost twice as fast as the AMD GPU and uh, I tested uh, this once again uh, comparing it with my previous results and the ray tracing performance is identical to my previous video. Even so the Arc GPU is quite a bit faster when ray tracing is enabled even at a native resolution. All right, now we're getting into more playable territory, especially on the Arc GPU. We've enabled uh, XCSS and FSR on quality. Once again, we're still not hitting 60 frames per second, and uh, I don't really think that it's worth it to go uh, more aggressive on the upscaling settings because uh, this is at 1080p, still on the high preset, still with the, all the previous settings. Now we can go more aggressive with the 
upscaling, but I just don't think it's worth it at 1080p. We'll be doing that anyway, just to see if we can actually get uh, 60 frames per second. I fell in the water there with the AMD benchmark run, so I had to cut that out. But let's see what we actually need to do to get 60 frames per second here. All right, now we're actually using performance mode on both FSR and XSS, and still we're not really maintaining 60 frames per second on the Arc GPU, and the AMD GPU is uh, hovering around 40 frames per second. So in my opinion, I don't think ray tracing is worth it for this game, if you've got these GPUs. Sure, you can lower the ray trace the settings, etc. I do think that ray trace global illumination looks pretty good, and it's definitely worth enabling if you've got the headroom, but unfortunately, these GPUs do struggle. On the Arc it's definitely a lot more playable so use at your own discretion. Right next up we've got The Last of Us Part 1 and this is once again on the 1080p high preset and yeah the AMD GPU wipes the floor with the Arc GPU. Just have a look at the frame time graphs there on the Intel it is uh, very inconsistent there's quite a lot of uh, stutter it's actually not just showing up in the frame time graph you actually do feel those so it's not really just micro stutter it is very noticeable in game and it does ruin the experience a bit but apart from the stuttering the frame rate on the Arc GPU is just not ideal the 1% and 0.1% lows are also significantly better on the AMD GPU. All right, so dropping the detail down to medium doesn't really help the Arc GPU. Sure, it uh, went up slightly, but uh, we're still not able to maintain 60 frames per second. And those uh, frame time spikes are still present. The 1% and 0.1% lows are abysmal when compared to the AMD. Now, this is probably just a driver issue. Uh, this is definitely not a VRAM issue as both GPUs have 8 gigabytes of VRAM. But this is pretty much what you get with the Intel Arc at the moment. Uh, one game might be almost twice as fast as the AMD GPU and then another game it's like 50% slower. This is also not the best optimized game but it has received some patches over the last few weeks. All right, so next up we are testing CSGO and I just wanna say I am playing a very competitive match here against the global elites. There are no bots whatsoever in this lobby. So if I do not play well, it's just because the other guys do play a lot better than me. All right, but so I included CSGO because this has been a point of contention for Intel. With the latest the driver updates, they have improved the lows in this game quite a bit. Now these uh, lows, it is actually a bot lobby, a real bot lobby not just players with low skill like myself but uh, so the one percent lows are actually quite low and uh, that is due to it being a uh, bot lobby it's quite intensive on the cpu with a normal online deathmatch the lows are actually significantly better but yeah you can see once again that the arc gpu falls far behind now csgo is quite difficult to benchmark it actually does have a built-in benchmark as well but that's not really representative of a real gameplay because we get like 800 frames per second in the benchmark and around 200 to 300 frames per second in game now next up we've got Dead Island 2 and I know it's probably not the most popular game out there but I just wanted to throw it in anyway just to give the benchmark video a little bit more variety and you can see that the AMD GPU is uh, pulling ahead by quite a bit getting over 200 frames per second in that corridor where the Intel GPU is around 170 frames per second definitely not a bad experience at all but the AMD GPU definitely has a significant lead here. maybe not in the lows the lows are pretty much identical but in the average frame rate we do see the AMD GPU has a bit of a lead but both of these GPUs would actually give you a pretty good experience in this game as it runs above 100 frames per second most of the time on both of them all right, so next up we've got Diablo 4 and I ran the same dungeon even though the layouts are completely different each time you log back into the game. But uh, just have a look at the stuttering. We're sitting at around five frames per second for the 1% lows on the AMD GPU. But as soon as we start fighting on the Intel GPU on the right, uh, I know you can't really see the character, apologies about that, but I just wanted to capture the performance metrics. You can see that when there's a lot of action on the screen, the stuttering is actually terrible. Just look on the left there. Uh, looks like mini freezers I wouldn't even call those stutters it's like a freezer but it does get better the more you play the game I actually just loaded up into the game teleported to this dungeon and started running it so 
given time the stuttering does get a little bit better but it is just pretty strange that this wasn't uh, what it was like at launch so something must have changed i'm not entirely sure but there you have it, both of these GPUs will give you a pretty similar experience in Diablo 4. Alright, so what's the takeaway of all of this? If both GPUs cost exactly the same, which they most often do, which GPU would you buy? I would highly recommend the 6600 XT. Sure, the Intel GPU has a lead in one or two games, especially when it comes to ray tracing but its drivers are still immature. I think it'll definitely get a lot better given time, but at this point in time, if you're looking for a decent 1080p GPU, the 6600 XT is still one of my favorite GPUs. I made a video about it uh, earlier this year where I actually called it the best 1080p GPU in 2023, and uh, I'd stick with that opinion for now. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, we hope to see you in the next one.